I'm at CPAC because Adam versus the man is about inspiring self-ownership, changing the conversation, and making people realize that their universal human principles are the same as the principles of liberty. And especially here, where we have so many enthusiastic activists who believe in freedom but maybe don't know what it means, it's a really exciting potential conversation. You know, there are a lot of journalists here that are chasing the big names. I like to talk to the average uh, attendees and just stand around the hallway here and, and, and just grab random and people and talk to them and have a kind of Socratic dialogue and it's really fun to engage with people like this then and, and I think the conservative movement is definitely moving in a libertarian direction and we see that here I, I've, I've I ran into a lot of fans uh, that, that, that I've been shocked to find here at CPAC and uh, it's 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 a great conversation to be a part of but we also get a lot of good YouTube videos and bring out all the bad ideas as well and and that's certainly fun I'd like to see the Ventura Stern ticket in 2016 I don't think there are any other candidates that, that really hold a candle to, to Jesse Ventura when it comes to telling it how it is and throwing down and, and, and really standing by his principles. So I'd love to see him uh, really mix things up in 2016. A lot of people are asking what the Republican Party should do to attract more minorities or women and, and, and voters that aren't traditionally part of the Republican demographic. And this is a question that's asked of libertarianism a lot as well because the liberty movement tends to be dominated by white men. And is that something inherent about being a white man? Or is it something more about the message and the existing conditions with those minorities and other demographics? And, and I would put it to you to say that the minorities are, uh, that, that are, uh, have become so dependent on government, or at least relatively speaking, that government has, has, has taken their disadvantage and used it against them, and used it against all of us as part of the government racket. They are more inundated with the propaganda of statism. They're more inclined to think that the state is looking out for them, that government is good. And so it's much harder to convince someone who's, who, whose mentality is, well, I'm oppressed, I'm disadvantaged, government is helping me, that we should not have government. But if you have the, the average white man who is the producer, you know, who thinks of himself as, well, government is a burden on me, it's a threat to my productivity, there's nothing in it for me, government's not looking out for me, it's a lot easier to convince them that there is, is, a, is a better way without government. So should the Republican Party really try to be changing its message to recruit these minorities? I, I don't really think that's what it is, or, or that the libertarian movement should be trying to say, well, how do we make it more appealing to them? I think it, it really is about the universal values of the non-aggression principle based on self-ownership, based on freedom, based on not being a slave to anyone. And, and I think we're always going to have an uphill battle with people that are dependent on government. And those happen to be, in the current American reality, more minorities. So you're always going to have that hurdle. And I don't think we should be worried about those superficial things. If anything, we should be rising above that as libertarians. I think it's the same thing is true about the Republican Party. I'm not a Republican, but I would give them the same advice. That, that they should stick to their principles and be true to those principles rather than compromising the message to pander to groups that are, that are more likely to be dependent on government. Instead, show them a way that these principles apply universally and attract more people with that. So if the libertarian message is about not the non-aggression principle, self-ownership, universal non-violence, that really should have an appeal to everyone. But right now, we've got a unique hurdle to clear with people who are dependent on government. But we shouldn't even be analyzing it based on race or other superficial demographic analyses like that, but rather rising above those and staying true to the core principles. I am running for president in 2020 on the platform of an orderly, peaceful dissolution of the United States federal government. It would be a good first step. I am not willing to compromise my principles in any way for any political gain. I think I've made that perfectly clear, and I've actually been very, very pleasantly surprised to find from people at CPAC that I've interviewed, even ones that were very hardcore mainstream conservatives, after talking to them for 15, 20 minutes, asking questions like, what is government? Is taxation theft? Who owns you? That it's really not that hard to convince them that a more localized government would be a step in the right direction, good for freedom. And I've actually got commitments from college Republicans here who are ready to support you know, the, whoever the mainstream candidate is, you know, going into 2016 saying, yeah, when you're running in 2020, you can count on our vote. And that's a really exciting thing to see that, that people are open to these ideas. I really think that the internet has changed the paradigm. Even if there are a lot of people out there who haven't quite changed their positions yet, they're much more open to hearing a message like this. And if anything, my job is going to get so much easier convincing people to abolish the federal government because 
they keep screwing things up and things keep getting worse and worse at the federal level every day. So between now and 2020, it's going to be a, 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 a huge growth of people who believe in these ideas and are looking for radical solutions to what are radical problems. The title of the book that I started writing while I was in jail is Freedom, all capital letters with an exclamation mark, and it's going to be released this Independence Day. I'm very excited about it. It's very unique among uh, political manifestos in that it's not based on the American experience or a local experience or an individual experience even. It's, it's a philosophical treatise that is about the modern phenomena of statism, and that's really the current global paradigm. People believe that we should turn to government to solve problems. Now, a lot of people are, are already evolved past that in their thinking. And, and I believe that democracy, the, the, the modern thing that we have is institutionalized violence in government today, is, is not necessarily evil. It certainly uh, is, is based on individual immoral acts being committed by government agents to steal from people through taxation. But it's still a step forward from where we've been in the past. And humanity has been evolving towards a free, stateless society. I see this as a progression, and it's a beautiful thing to be a part of. So the next step is to assert these universal moral values. You know, we actually live in the most peaceful times in human history where you as an individual are less likely to be subject to violence by another human being than ever before. That's such a beautiful thing to celebrate. And when you understand that government is force and coercion violence, a thief or a murderer is someone who's trying to govern you. And it doesn't matter if it's a big scale or a small scale, it's just as bad. But we are evolving, at least socially evolving, towards a state where we absolutely condemn universally any form of aggression or coercion or violence or threats, whatever, being used against peaceful people. And I think that's the next phase in human social evolution. It's an exciting time to be alive, really exciting time to be a part of it. That's the message that's captured in the book. And the other thing that makes it unique is that it really captures the, uh, the epiphany that I had while I was in jail about the relationship between happiness and freedom. Because a lot of people are caught up in this idea from Jefferson of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And they think of it as kind of a progression. Obviously, if you don't have life, you can't have liberty, you can't pursue happiness. But people think that liberty allows you to pursue happiness. But even those words, pursuing happiness, mislead us. Because happiness isn't something that you can chase down and beat over the head with a club and drag home to your cave to enjoy forever and ever. It's a choice. It's a way of life. It's about true emotional, psychological, mental freedom of being able to choose your own state of mind at any time, not being subject to the, 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 the emotional bullying of people around you or the, the, the emotional attacks that, that, that people use to control each other or the manipulations that we try to use to, to affect each other's behavior, to keep each other down or to, to inject negative emotions into our lives. But happiness causes liberty and a truly free person looks at the oppressor differently. When you can be happy and put a smile on your face, when you've literally got a boot on your neck, you're not angry anymore. You don't resent your oppressor. You don't want to fight for liberty. You look at that person and you say, wow, I feel sorry for you. I pity you. I want to empower you. I want to share with you what I have. And I think that's what's uh, evolving in the message of liber liberty itself, is that we can bring that to the world. We can share how this makes our lives better. If we're going to be, oh, I woke up to the nature of government, and now I'm angry, and I'm, I'm depressed, and, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm furious, and I'm, I, I, join me in my depression, and my anger, and my fear. Nobody's going to want to be a part of that. But if the truth doesn't set you free, and it doesn't make your life better, then you don't have anything to offer others. But for those of us that have realized these fundamental truths, sharing them with others is sharing a gift. And the other thing about the book that's so important is that it talks about localization. A lot of libertarians have this ideal and it's like they, they miss the, the transition and how to get there and ignore the reality. And, and libertarians have been described as not being compassionate because we don't want people to steal from others in order to give to the poor or whatever it is that, that is compassionate about government. And, and that's not what makes libertarians uncompassionate because I, I think there is a legitimacy to that accusation. A lot of libertarians forget the transition. How do we get there? How do we wean ourselves off the system? How do we transition without pulling the rug out from underneath anyone? And localization is the answer. We take governments apart from the top down. In the United States, we have a unique structure that gives us the opportunity to do this through the electoral system, through the states, counties, getting it down to the local government, and eventually to restoring the rights of the divine individual.